today from my private page. For some reason, my my uh, regular page, my business page, isn't working. I can't even open a dang thing. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe maybe I got shut down for saying the word boo boo. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, so yeah, though here we are. Um, yeah, <clears throat> today let me share this around. I know it's a pain in the butt, but. Uh, let me share this around real quick while everybody sort of joins the room if you're even getting notifications because if you're you're not like you are on my regular page maybe you don't even get notifications i don't even know i hope you do that be, could be great <clears throat> give me a holler if you're hearing this seeing this um and uh whatever mate whatever let me share this around try to share it to a page all right who we got here who's who's in the room give me some comments here ladies and gentlemen give me comments here ladies and gentlemen i'd be fantastic Fedpreneur Tribe, how's that? There we go. Boom. So the group. Um, oop, page I'm in, not group. <laughs> All right, who's in here today? All right, come on. Who's in here? We're going to talk today about doing this first before you ask for anything. And it's something that's very rudimentary, but people forget about it all the time. Uh, you know, I, I had a coaching session today with, I don't know, probably 15 M&A guys and gals. Hey, Travis Johnson, wouldn't miss it for the world, my brother. Thanks for that message, dude. That was like, boom, made my day, man. I freaking, freaking honest. Oops, I just swore online. What's up, Brian Hess? How you doing, my man? All right, look at this guy in my room. Honored. <laughs> um, I can't do two things at once. I'm trying to share this around for some reason. It's not working. Anyway, I want to talk about doing this first. And this thing that you do first is something that everyone does intrinsically and automatically. But when it comes to things that you want, a lot of people don't do this thing, and that is solving a problem first helping someone else first. You know, I was talking to these M&A guys today and they talk about, hey, Andrew Smith, what's up, brother? Talking about M&A right now. And, you know, they, they, they talk about, hey, do I talk to the owner first about the revenue of the company so I can structure the deal and then go to the deal? I said, no. Wh why are you even there? Okay, maybe he wants to sell his company, but why does he want to sell his company or she? You know, What's the, what's the issue? Why, why does he want to sell the company? Because he wants to retire. Why does he want to retire? Because he's tired. Why is he tired? Because he worked too much. Why did he work too much? Because he's trying to provide for his family. Why is that an issue? It's an issue because he ignored his wife. Why is that an issue? Because she hates him now. So why is that an issue? Because he wants to make it better. So like all of these things, right? The seven whys, they say. Right? All these things lead to you being able to have a more precise answer or a more, more, more precise solution to their problem. If I walk into a bar and I walk up to a girl and say, hey, you look great. You want to go home? What are my chances? Why don't I go up there and get to know them first, find out what they need, what they are, and sort of say, look, you know what? Actually, you're looking to relax. I got a hot tub. You know what I mean? It's like, it, you know what I mean? It could be cheesy, but it could work, right? Because you're providing a solution for, for one of their issues. And this happens every day in life. If you want something from somebody, give first. If you want something from, from, from somebody, hey, Chris, what's up, brother man? If you want something from somebody, always create that solution first. And it's, there's a story that I use all the time. Well, one of them. And um, I'm sure Andrew has heard this before. I don't know where I'm sharing this anymore. I totally lost my lost my tra train of thought. I think I got shared in the groups. There we go. Vetpreneur Tribe, Weird Council, Humble Alpha, <laughs> Hitpreneur. There we go. Last goal setting course. All right, good. I think we're good now. Sorry, my, my business page isn't working. Anyway, so let me give you an example of what I mean. <clears throat> so you guys know I'm an M&A. I'm not a big deal, right? I'm not a big deal in M&A, but I do what they call WIBOs, work in and buy out. And people think M&A is I go see a company and buy it. And to, well, I don't have that kind of money to be throwing around buying, you know, $20 million companies. So there's ways to buy companies and there's ways to work with companies to take, take equity. Because me, I don't want a job. I don't want to buy a job. So if I buy a company like a plumbing company, I would never do that because I don't want to run the company. So I, 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 I look for companies where I can do a value add first. So what do I do? I see a company for sale. I get on a call with them and I find out, so what's going on? Where you at? How you doing? What's your status? What's not working? What have you tried to overcome it? Why do you think that didn't work out? And where do you want to go? Those are five questions I ask in a conversation, right? And once I find that out, let's give you an example. So I was talking to a, uh, a company in Austria and they do a, a spray that's porcelain and you spray it on the barrels of weapons and it keeps them um, from freezing or getting too hot. So it's like, I mean, they don't freeze, but keep them from getting too cold or too hot and it's not oily. So you can just brush it right off. <clears throat> and they want to get to America. So typically I'd say, okay, well, uh, you're looking for a partner, an equity partner. I can invest this much and then try to take you to, to America. No. <clears throat> what did I say? Solve their problem first, right? So what do I do? I say, give me a week. I'll be back. I, I, I called America to my buddies <clears throat> in the military, of course, in, in the military space, veteran space. Found a distributor, right? Found the, the, 
the SHOT Show, which everyone knows in Vegas. I think it's in Vegas. I've never been. And um, I found uh, also a distributor, and I found um, outlets that he would distribute to, and we calculated how much he would sell, if he would sell, things like that. And then, of course, you have to set it up the, into the shipping and the manufacturing, that kind of stuff, because he would have to manufacture more to ship to America. So I figured all that out. Then I went back to him, and I said, okay, this is the deal. You want to go to America, you want to sell, and you want to get into outlets. Okay, I got you there. And we have a show as well. So I got you a distributor. I got you some outlets. They already know the product. They love it. They want it. They want it. They wish it. And we got we got a booth at the, at the shot show ready to go for when you go. You can share the booth with my buddy who has a uh, has a, has a table. He was like, "Wow, really?" I'm like, "Yeah, really." And he goes, "Okay, so how are we gonna how much are you gonna invest?" I said, "I'm like, I'm, I'm, we're not talking about investing here. I'm talking about solving your problem." <clears throat> so I walked away with that. I said, "This is what we're gonna do." For the introductions, I want 20k. So I'm gonna introduce you to the distributor and his outlets in a meeting, and you're gonna meet all these people directly. That's a, that's a 20k upfront um, introduction fee. Then I wish to have, um, th what did I say? Five percent equity. Uh, sorry, five percent commission for the next three years, and I want five percent equity. You guys are like five percent? What's that? Well, it's a company that could blow up. It's a company that could go up. You know, 20, 40, 150 million, whatever it is. It could be huge, because this is only one product, right? And I know how how amazing it is. It's been looked for in America. So we we go back and forth and, and negotiate. I end up getting 15k for the introductions, and I get. I, and he goes, I don't like 5k over three years. How's three? five percent over three years how's how's that three percent over five years i was like that's even better so heck why not right and then i asked for a retainer for the first three months so i could set up the deal he said okay so basically <clears throat> this guy paid me to own equity in his company to to help him uh, structure the deal over in america get him in contact with his people so i ended up having equity in the company why because i solved their problems before i asked for anything before I got into any negotiations, before I even looked for what I what 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 I wanted out of the deal, <clears throat> and that's the key. If you if you go to our book, Unleash Your Humble Alpha, which you've all seen, probably. Hey, baby love, my my wife calling me sexy there. I love that. <clears throat> is we create space, and when you what, what creating space is so powerful because when you walk into a room, when you go into a meeting, when you go talk to your wife, when you talk to your kids, when you go on stage as a keynote speaker, especially to customers, you go there with no preconceived notions, none. That means no cookie cutter solutions, no preconceived notions, and no sort of like ideas of what you want out of the deal. Why? Because we cannot control the outcome. We only control the intention. Sure, you can say I have the the, the ten you know closing techniques, the poor you know all these kind of like you know uh, you know it is, it's going to be a dollar a day. That's less than a coffee. You know that kind of stuff. That's all. That's all leveraging is coercion. Coercion. So uh, hey Andrew, thanks man, and. Taking notes, what? Okay, yeah, for my wife? No. <laughs> Just kidding. You, you see what I'm saying? So I walk up, no, no idea of what's going to happen. One focus, add value by solving problems. Everything I know, all the deal prop structures I have, all the issues that I can, I can solve for them, they're in a toolbox beside me, and I only use them when I need them. You see what I'm saying? It's super. No preaching notions going there with curiosity. Exactly, Elba. Hey, Elba, how are you doing? Exactly curiosity always but the intention of solving a problem by adding value adding value by solving a problem you know how powerful that is i can talk i can go into any room and i don't give a crap who's in there that's how i got to work for people like andrea bocelli or olivia newton john because i wasn't i wasn't worried about the outcome because if that's the path that i'm on that's the path that i'm on it doesn't it, and if i'm not on that path it won't happen so hey boom super you know and these are hey israel and these are the, this is the way I do every single interaction. I go to the post office. I go here. I go there. And when I find myself in a place where I'm asking for something, hey, Jason White, Semper Fi, Buenos Dias, Israel. And if I find myself in a place where I go into an interaction and I have an expectation, I feel it, man. I feel it like, oh, man, this guy's going to feel that I want something. Because if I want something, you're going to feel it. I don't care how nice I am. You're going to feel that I'm trying to get you to a place to get you to buy now, every single sales trainer will tell you there's techniques and tricks and do this. And I know I was a sales trainer for many years. I trained the entire European team of, of our corporation, 3,500 companies and uh, um, employees. And the team before that was, was I think it was 1,000 people in, in another company. And I taught all those things, you know, like, hey, you know what? If you break this down per day, it's only a dollar a day. That's less than a Starbucks coffee. What's that? You can, you can give up a Starbucks coffee every day, right? That's not a problem. It's bullshit, right? It's bullshit. That's hardcore. You're manipulating somebody. You're trying to trick them into something. And I don't care what anybody says about sales. That's what it is. If you sell like that, 
that you're manipulating. Those days are over. They worked in the old days, but they don't work anymore. It's over, okay? You can do it, sure, but your closing rate will be much, much uh, lower than if you solve a problem. Same thing goes, Dr. Daniel, same thing goes, let's say, for health clubs, right? Someone comes in the health club, okay, you want to join a club? I don't know. Well, of course you do. Look at you. You know, you lose some weight, stay healthy, healthy forever. It's a lifestyle. You got to do this forever, right? So you're telling this person and probably educating this person that they need to buy something. Do you like to be educated by someone you walk into to buy their service? I don't think you do. You know, you want to be educated by, by, by the cook who's cooking your food saying, look, this is how I'm going to make. No, you can't eat that because you, ha you can't eat two starches. Would you appreciate that? No, hell no, you wouldn't appreciate that. So what do you do? In health clubs, you solve problems. You sit down with them. You say, what's your problem? Where are you at? right? Where are you at? What's your status report? What are your issues? What have you tried to do to overcome them? Why do you think they didn't work and where do you want to go? Right? These are the questions you ask, but you do it in a conversation. And then you show them parts of the gym that apply to their issues so that you can solve them. And they come back and they're like, man, this is awesome. When can I start? That's how it works. Now, in the old days, you would sit there and go, okay, let's, let's draw a line down the middle of a piece of paper. On the left-hand side, what are the negatives if you join? On the right-hand side, what are the positives if you join? And if the positives are more than the negatives, then you're going to join. I mean, come on. Seriously? Whoever does that, dinosaur, right? Time to get upgraded, right? Time to get upgraded. It's all here. It's all right here. And this is not a sales book. That's the cool thing about it. Because what I'm telling you right now is not a sales book. It's not a sales book. It's called contenance. It's called having class. It's called giving before you receive. It's called doing something for another person before you ask for anything at all. And you do it because you truly and honestly care and are genuinely interested in helping that person in front of you. If you're not, then don't even try to sell. If you don't care, save yourself the trouble. Save yourself the trouble. People can feel that you care about them. It's Elba, amen to that. They can completely live with that you know i mean <clears throat> sorry people can people they they completely care but you it it's uh i can't think of the word i was speaking german oh jesus i can't think of the word so anyway um you know you gotta be you gotta be honest about it to yourself like am i doing this right now and being nice to this person and solving their problem because i want the deal if you can I mean, this is amazing if you can separate yourself from the outcome life is magic like, I'm on calls with people sometimes. I would love, I mean, like famous people, I would love to have them as a client. But I have zero intention of pushing them in that direction at all. Zero. And I'm like, look, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It's my path. My path is there. And if that's on my path, they're on my path, it's going to happen. If not, whatever. Right? So that's the lesson, I guess you could call it, for today. Because I just, I, I literally got off a call with the, with the, with the other MA guys talked about it got on, on another like a mini coaching call for 15 minutes same exact thing same exact thing people go into something expecting okay i'm a salesman you're a customer i have to sell to you no you gotta buy from me people get it wrong all the time you know that's why i don't like working with uh, many venture capital companies i don't like talking to them because they, they're always sitting there on their throne going look you know come to me i got money right you got to pitch to me and for me I don't know, without, without entrepreneurs looking for money, there wouldn't have been any VCs in the first place, would there? Right? I, I, I want a partner who cares if I work with somebody. I want, I want someone who cares about me. I don't want to just want their money, right? That's a big difference. And that's the way the world's going. That's the way the world's going, I promise you. People are sick of this, this leverage and everything, at least at a certain level. Up, you know, up at the higher levels in politics, we all know what's going on there, right? Anyway. Hey, Dabitha, how are you? Great to see you. All right, so that's it for today. Hope you're doing fantastic. Remember, give before you get, give before you ask, solve problems, add value, create space, and you're going to live a completely different life that is almost worry-free. And then, of course, the expectations, knock them out of the way, unless, of course, you verbalize them, right? We all know that. Why? Because it's in the book. You better have read it. <laughs> okay, everybody, have a fantastic one. And remember, it's all about quality of life. See you tomorrow.